news. What does 2017 hold for investors and consumers? We turn now to Raymond James advisor Darren Coleman. Good to have you with us. Thank you, with us for the discussion are Darren Coleman, senior vice president and portfolio manager in the private client group at Raymond James. What does all of this mean for Canadian consumers and also investors? Joining me now is Darren Coleman, senior VP and portfolio manager at the private client group at Raymond James. Darren, good to be with you. Thanks for coming in. Over the next half hour, we're going to get the advisor's take on dealing with clients this tax season. So let's begin with our panel of advisors today, Darren Coleman, Senior VP and Portfolio Manager, Private Client Group at Raymond James. Welcome back to BNN Advisor. Joining us in studio for our final segment is Darren Coleman. He is a Senior VP and Portfolio Manager at the Private Client Group at Raymond James. Uh, Darren, welcome. Nice to be back. Hi. We, how can Mr. Morneau move the levers to ensure Canada's economy grows if corporate Canada won't open its wallet? Well, that's beyond my ability to answer that question. I mean, we work prim primarily with individuals at their kitchen tables, at their office boardrooms, to try and figure out how they manage their own economy for their own families. So Mr. Morneau has a challenge, obviously, to do this across the country. Uh, we have that individual challenge with clients to figure out how do we take all of that data as it applies to their personal lives and find their own way forward. Well, that's really the heart of what financial planning is all about, right, is balancing multiple competing financial objectives. So the first thing would be, you know, take stock of where you are right now. The next thing then is to sit down and say, what are my working assumptions for where I think I'd like to be at different points in time? So, maybe so it does require you to put a little time and effort into this. Um, well, maybe not necessarily more than what it may take to plan a great vacation, and people <laughs> are very willing to do that. Right. But certainly uh, a regular visit to your financial planner, to your investment advisor, to help navigate that is critical. So you do need to look to see... Does your investment thesis fit with what you're seeing on the ground? Does it make sense to you? Mm -hmm. And when we see retail sales slowing, we certainly would be very careful about the kinds of securities we buy, whether they're merchandise manufacturers or even retailers and REITs that may have a concentration to retail. Um, do you have concerns with owning some of the banks? Uh, the banks have certainly been great investments for Canadians. The dividends are very robust. When we own banks for clients, we really want to focus on the quality of the dividend income that we're getting, uh, and the price appreciation on the security is secondary to us. And I would say that's probably the right way to look at banks uh, as an investment for Canadians. Uh, I'd say careful as opposed careful. to cautious. Yeah. So I think the trick for everybody is actually have a plan. You know, it's easy to look at stocks or investing, but at the end of the day, have a plan that actually fits you. And if you need help, find a professional who can assist you with it. Okay. Darren, good to be with you today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, I think investors have been looking for greater transparency into uh, the fees that they pay and the performance that those investments that they've chosen have done for them, uh, as well as making sure that the investments that are selected for them or with them with their investment advisor are indeed suitable for them. Here. Yeah, there's so much um, interesting information, misinformation, and I think investors are rightly a little confused about the distinctions between them. So the first thing we do is we explain to clients, let's distinguish the investment from the box it comes in. Difference. Mutual funds have a certain style and a certain construct. ETFs have a different one. Uh, price can be different across the two of them, but really the number one consideration is what's the investment itself? What is it holding? How is it managed? Is it an index-based product? Is it a managed product? Because ETFs and, and mutual funds are now kind of being blurred together. Well. We know most investors underperform their own investments. There's been lots of studies that show that. So, you know, we have clients that have done very, very well with mutual fund portfolios. We have clients that have done very well with ETF portfolios. It's never the stuff that matters. It's how did they manage the stuff? So did they hold when they should hold? Did they buy when they should buy? Were they well diversified? Did mm -hmm. they have quality? Did they have quality? Um, so the, the product is really less important to us. It's really more what's the investment itself and then how well did they manage themselves mm -hmm. with it? So if you run a fee-based practice and even more particularly if you run a discretionary practice, as we both do, you know, there is no conflict any longer. It really is what's the right tool to get the job done. So uh, I think that's important that clients are made aware of the fact that there's no difference in compensation because only the client pays us. The product does not any longer. One of the other uh, phenomena that's going on certainly is the sandwich generation. The baby boomers looking after the parents and also the kids. So the Clients that are at about retirement are finding that I have to look after mom and dad while I still have to be mom and dad. Mm -hmm. uh, so their retirement is now complicated by not just looking at their own retirement, but looking sideways uh, up to parents and down to kids uh, to figure out what to do. What but clearly in Toronto, we tend to have a lot of high income, uh, more so than in other places around the country. So more people are affected by the high end, uh, the high, high, highest marginal tax bracket. So a lot of concern around how do they keep more of what they've been able to make. So tax planning plays a really key role for us. Okay. Yeah, because it's one thing to earn it. The next thing is how do I keep as much as I have? Absolutely. Darren, good to be with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Darren, let me ask you, even though you might not be the millennial. I'm not a millennial. <laughs> <anymore. Thank laughs> but hands all start with you. 
Uh, you know, what's interesting is that the different generations actually don't have as much um, it, it, that it makes them different as much as makes them the same. It's really when you're at a certain stage of life, certain things take precedence. So when you're a millennial, you're probably trying to figure out how do I get the job that I want? How do I meet the partner that I want? How do I maybe start a family? Uh, and those are the same issues their parents had when they were that age. So as people go through life, they will have certain commonalities that appear based on where they are in life. And I think what's different today, perhaps, is how technology affects people, and it affects boomers, it also affects millennials. Um, so it may not be as much about substance, it's probably more about style. Okay, you meet them in person, uh, how often? Well, we do a lot of WebEx now, um, and because we have a cross-border practice, we had to, to put that in place for clients that aren't in Toronto, that are across Canada and into the United States. Hmm. It's you, but at yeah. home, I'll have my, my phone, and we'll take questions and answer back at all times of day and night now. And so how it's difficult it really is, Darren, you do say that it's important to pay yourself first. What exactly does that mean and what does it look like? Yeah, so we changed that up a little bit. So the, the advice of pay yourself first came from Dave Chilton and the Wealthy Barber. We're all familiar with it and Dave's book has been helpful for hundreds of thousands of Canadians and we're certainly a big fan. And what I've noticed though is that people don't tend to do it and it's not because they're irresponsible. I would argue it's because they're very responsible and that they want to pay all of their bills and all of their outstanding debts and commitments before they start saving. And that's, and Dave's advice was pay yourself before those things but many people find that a challenge because they want to live up to their obligations. And what we've noticed is that quite often people who all of their bills are paid can't save. And I've discovered that if we change the words to bill yourself first, we give them, we take that savings amount and create another bill, mm -hmm. basically from themselves in the future till now, they will save and they will pay. So changing the power of the word changes behavior. Hmm. Yeah, so I, I, I think it's important that people understand we may have a longer term destination in mind, but it's also important to set up what I call waypoints along the way, things to see and do along the way. Because for many people, focusing on something that's 20 or 30 years away seems almost impossible to attain. So we also, along with having those longer term goals, the destinations, we also want to set up m markers along the way of things to do. Maybe it's a vacation, uh, a holiday, a new car, whatever that acquisition thing is, to give you a reward. So a more shorter term goal that may be one year, 18 months away. And I think as advisors, we have to remember clients have difficulty seeing that far into the future. So give them other things to attain that are shorter term that also lead in the same direction. Okay. And our finance manager just commented on this idea of job churn. So I think making sure your own skills are marketable is probably one of the most important lessons to take from that message. Darren, thank you for your time. Thank you. Darren Coleman is the senior VP of the private client group at Raymond James.